Hello everyone, in this video, we are going to talk about how to build a moon board by yourself. And I promise you that as long as you have some basic knowledge about carpentry, you can do this by yourself. First, let's talk about the tools that we will need in the process. So we need a table saw, a circular saw, a chop saw, some heavy duty C clamps, and of course, a screwdriver. And for my specific moon board, I do have some specific design criteria. First of all, I want the moon board to be freestanding. Secondly, I want it to be able to fit into my living room, which has a nine foot tall ceiling. Thirdly, in order to make sure that I can change the angle and move the board around easily in the future, I want to make sure that the assembly process is easy. And here are the build guidelines for the standard moon board. As you can see, the required space is quite big, which is something that most of us cannot afford. On this part of the guideline, they are talking about the frame behind it. And as an architect, I can promise you that it is very hard to find plywood on the market that is thin, light, and also able to safely spend more than 800 millimeters easily. So as long as you are building the frame by yourself instead of ordering all the parts from the official website. Do not use the frame design that is provided by this guideline. Next, let's get into the details of how they align the grid of the moon board. In order to balance the users from both metric and imperial systems, the moon board company created this set of drawings both in metric and imperial units. As you can see, they created this grid system that the spacing in between each hole are consistent so that they are always 200 millimeters apart on the X axis and 200 millimeters apart on the Y axis, except between row six and row seven, and also between row 12 and row 13. As you can see that the spacing between row 7 to the edge is 100 mm and the row 6 to the edge is 120. This also applies to the spacing between row 12 and row 13. In those two specific situations, the y-axis spacings in between are 220 mm. But again, the spacings on the x-axis are still 200 mm. And of course, they also made these detailed drawings for the Imperial system users. Okay, now let's talk about what kind of materials that we are going to need. If you are a well-trained carpenter and you will never waste any of the materials, here are the minimum requirements. You need 10 pieces of 2 by 6 by 12 and 15 pieces of 2 by 6 by 10. For the ones that do not have enough knowledge about the lumber industry in the United States. For the 2x6 lumber, the actual measurement of the section is 1.5 inches by 5.5 inches. But the lengths are always accurate. In order to make a perfect moon board, I made this very detailed Rhino model before the construction took place. And now I'm going to show you this model real quick. And after seeing it, I'm sure you will understand the process very well. This is an overview of the model. And let's talk about this model step by step. First of all, I brought this picture into the environment and set it as a reference. Secondly, I generated the grid system accordingly. And again, the spacings in between each hole are 200 millimeters, except between row 12 and 13 and row six and seven. And the seams in between those rows are the edges for the plywood. The third step is to develop this frame. I set the distance between each joist as 400 millimeters. As you can see, from this end of this joist to the end of the other joist, the distance is 400 millimeters. Now I am going to explain why I have chosen the 2x6 lumber and set the spacing as 400 millimeters for the roof assembly in the United States. When the rafter spacing is 16 inches, a two by six can support up to 30 pounds of live load per square foot. 
of weight with a span of 12 feet. In our case, the length of the joist is exactly 12 feet, but because it is tilted, the real span is only about 9 feet. And other than its own weight and the plywood, the frame only needs to hold the holds, the T-nuts, and the climber's weight. In average, that is only about 2 pounds per square foot. So 2 by 6 is more than good enough for the span, and I decided to use 400 millimeters, which is about 15.7 inches, as the spacing in between. When we pull up the grid, we can see that this column of holes should have open space behind it, so that we can put the T-nuts there, and the span between the two central joists is about 25 inches, so I decided to choose the three quarters thick plywood, which can easily span up to 25 inches when the live load is only about two pounds per square foot. The next step is a little bit tricky. I designed a group of studs so that they can hold the joists and make sure that the angle between the joists and the vertical line is 50 degrees so that the lowest point to the highest point of this structure is under 2758 millimeters which is exactly 9 feet which can fit into my living room very well at the same time in order to have the space for driving the wood screws and lock everything all together i set up the gap in between the studs i do recommend that each connection should have at least three three inches long wood screws but also do not put too many since too many screws might damage the wood. The following step is to put the temporary support up so we can build the supporting structure. Again, in order to make sure that the structure is strong enough, I designed this sandwich-like double column assembly. I moved the studs in both ends inward a little bit so that the horizontal member on the ground can stay on the same plane as the joist on each end so that I can put the sandwich-like pieces around it. The next step is to get rid of the temporary support. And finally, it was a time to install the plywood. I used five sheets of plywood in total, which includes a half sheet for the kicker board on the bottom. The three pieces on the right side took one and a half sheets in total. And the big pieces on the left also took three sheets all together. I'm going to show you the real world construction process and I will also upload this Rhino model to the description of the video. Please keep in mind that in order to fit the moon board into my living room, some part of the kicker board has been revised. And if you have enough space for a 40 degrees full size moon board, please contact me and I will give you a revised model. I started from the frame. I used eight pieces of two by six by 12 for the length and used a bunch of two by six by 10 as the header joists. As we know, the standard moonboard width is eight feet. I choose to set it as 10 feet here so that I can make sure the columns will not be on the way when I am climbing. Here are some details of the vertical studs and those images and videos explain how the parts are assembled together in order to support the span in the end. The next thing that I did is to screw those studs to the lumber so that it can support the whole frame at the end. Again, in order to make sure that the horizontal members are on the same plane as the joists on both ends, the lumber that the studs sit on is a little bit shorter than 10 feet. You can find the detailed dimensions in the digital model. Here is a process that shows me connecting the horizontal members to the studs. And then me and my friend Mac were ready to put up the big frame, which was such a monumental moment for me. As you can see, Mac put the temporary support in place so that I was ready to finish the structure. From here, I started 
to build the column assembly, as I mentioned earlier. The sandwich-like structure provides very strong support, and here is a detail of the moment connection. I put four pieces of half inch diameter, seven inch long bolts on each end, and again, they are super strong. Aligning everything together was a crucial part, and this clip shows me where drawing the guidance for the drilling process. Again, just repeating the previous process on the other side, and as you might have noticed, I have been using those big C clamps for all kinds of situations. I believe that each of them is about $60, and I think that you should get at least two of those if you are trying to build this by yourself. Again, here are the details of the moment connection. Finally, I was working on the last moment connection on the top, and here is the detailed view of the specific connection. Warning, this is something that I want you guys to avoid, which is to draw the guidelines after installing the plywood. It is a very bad idea. Please finish all the drilling processes and install all the T-nuts before installing the plywood. Do not do it after. Finally, I think we are at the hardest part, which is to install the plywood. Each of the big sheets weighs about 60 pounds, and because of its dimension, it was extremely hard for me to do it by myself. The second big sheet was the worst nightmare. I took a lot of effort to do it and almost hurt it myself. I did finish it because I used the C-clamps, the strap, and ratchet. And again, do not do it by yourself. So I got Mac to help me with installing the last piece. And even for the two of us, it was not an easy task. But we did nail it in the end. Here is what it looks like in the end. Again, things were not perfect. But overall, all the details and results were exactly the same as I planned. All the parts aligned very well, and the seams in between the plywood were tiny. Again, this is my favorite detail. Thank you so much for spending almost 15 minutes on this poorly made video. And if you have any questions about how to construct your own moonboard, please feel free to comment down below and I will try my best to help. Thank you and enjoy climbing.